Hi guys, welcome to Winsome Cottage Garden. My name is Hannah. I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. It is a little bit late, it's about 7.30, 8 o'clock, uh, but it is the perfect weather. It's only about 80, there's a breeze, and I think it's the perfect time to do an end of June garden tour and update. Uh, I'm not quite sure when you're going to be seeing this. It might be a tiny bit into July, um, but I thought I would document it because it's been two to three weeks since our last garden tour, and there's been a lot of changes in that time. You can see that I need to cut my grass, first of all, uh, and there's been a lot of things that have bloomed out, unfortunately. It's been quite warm, but, uh, and that has really sapped some blooms. But these planters that we planted are looking good. You can already see that this this planter, some things are starting to stool out well, like the uh, Astrospermum, something like that. I can't remember their exact name. Uh, but they're just so pretty. I always call them oxeye daisies. This color in particular, especially next to the dramatic black, is my fave. I am actually, you can see also we've got some nice strawberries that are beginning to put out some runners. Once they get a little bit longer, I'm going to do what I did in here, which is kind of bring it over and stick it down into the dirt. You can see I was gone for a little bit and some things got a little too ripe, so I just stick them somewhere. You can see also some of the dahlias we planted in the pots are beginning to uh, poke through. Not all of them are, for instance. Um, I had a slight issue with some water earlier today like this one has not yet poked through i'm not sure if that's it's been very wet i hope it's not because it's rotting but you can also see that this area is looking fantastic uh the coral bells who chair at the back are beginning to bloom this guy still looks a little sad but he's looking better i guess i can't complain too much um yeah and i've actually kind of set up this a little bit more. I don't know when I'm going to get the roses in the ground, so I've kind of incorporated them into this display. This is that um, Munstead Wood Rose, which is smelling and looking gorgeous, which is exciting. I've got some other plants that need to go places. Uh, and then today I'm going to get these things planted up. I also picked up at one point in time another rose. This is a at last rose. And it's just dreamy and I've got a place for it. So you'll probably see a video in the next little bit planting those up. Uh, here's another peek at some of the dahlias that are poking through and I think they're looking good. Uh, you can see that I have, I think this is a beech tree maybe. I don't know. It's a stump. I need to get some stump killer and just cut it and wipe it on top because I've cut that down multiple times. This is an area that is probably going to be changing in the next little bit. This is Heliopsis. I don't know what kind. It was here when I moved. Uh, it's a very bright orange and yellow and brown and red kind. A little bit jarring for my taste. So these are actually going to go to the cottage because they fit in better there and it's more suited to a larger space. You can see the peony needs some deadheading unfortunately but this iris is just putting out blooms. The yarrow and some magic wands are coming. This is a pretty large stand of uh, purple cone flowers. This one actually planted itself and I didn't move it quick enough. I'll probably move it next year, but this is what I wanted to show you over here the most. I don't remember what variety this is. This is a Japanese iris. I'm gonna see, I bought it bare root um, and it is just, stunning. They're huge flowers and like they're very productive. The veining and the yellow. I am more of you know a bearded iris type of person but mano mano. This is probably one of my favorite irises I have. I'll see if I can find the uh, name of it and put it on the screen. More deadheading. It's kind of like the story of my life at this moment that you can see that the some of the pincushion flowers are doing well this is still okay some of these are looking a little bleached out in the heat because they're not getting as much protection as they used to get in the past this thing it's on its last legs so i don't know what's wrong with it 
I think I said in the last tour that I'm planning on taking it out in the fall. I thought it was a key, uh, an iron deficiency issue, like looking at the, these leaves, because uh, this is a crab apple. These leaves are very stunted. Um, and there's a ton of die off, as you can see. These are the ones that did come through, but I've given it chelated island iron. I've given it slow release iron. I've done other soil testing and I can't think of what it could be. So its days are numbered. And I was worried that some of these might not do well underneath it, but so far, so good. I'm dealing with some brown spot and a plethora of clovers that I should really get before they go to bloom and seed. These are beginning to grow. You remember how small they were when I got them in the ground? They're really liking life. I've also cut back some of the daffodils. You can see these are Serenity Alliums that are probably gonna pop in the next little bit. They're looking pretty good. This iris is also done. The salvia is nearing its end and the Mexican primrose is also, oh, I don't know how long it'll be, but it's still looking good and pretty, which is nice. But next up, we've got some more yarrow. This is the peachy keen, a white ones, Veronica. I don't remember what the sedum is called, but I love the juxtaposition of its purple foliage next to this creeping cranes bill geranium. Just think it's so pretty. If we look over here too, you can see that the crocosima is doing really well. And I suspect in the next couple weeks it'll start putting up bloom stalks, which will be really fun to see. If we go back around the path, uh, we can see I've got something kind of eating some of the dahlias, but there's a couple uh, that are worse than others. This is one of them. But I'm happy to say I think all of them have poked their way out of the ground. Um, this cherry brandy rutabecchia looks like it's going to be showing sometime soon, which is exciting. This is supposed to be a ginger wine nine bark, but it's looking very, very green. I still love it, whatever it is. And you can also see that the cosmos are looking really big. I haven't looked, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yep. There we go. I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if I found some buds and there's one. I bet give it a week or two and there's just going to, the show will start and it will keep on going. I need to get back after this because that's a Virginia creeper, which is a noxious weed in our area. This is variegated dogwood. As always, the variegated dogwood adds just such a nice pop at the back, especially next to the euonymus. The flocks are doing well. What is completely gone, I am so sad to say, is our pincushion flower drift that was doing so well. They got eaten by probably a rabbit visitor, which is a bummer. These hollyhock, the dwarf variety I put back here, also had been munched on but they seem to be making a comeback, which is nice. I don't remember what this grass is. Actually, I don't think I know what it is. It came, it was here when, um, well, it was in the garden when I moved in and it's never grown big. It's a more narrow habit and it puts on these beautiful seed heads that I think are just so gorgeous. It's looking well. I told you guys that I thought that these delphiniums might not make it because I haven't had much luck. Looks like we've got one that looks good. One that's holding on and one that I'd say is on its last legs. Eryngium is looking good. These dahlias, I think all of them came up, which is nice. Some are bigger than others. I just came through and did some pinching, but we have one, two, three, four, five. So that's exciting. Scatatrancha is going to be putting on some blooms very quickly. I love Looking at the color of the blue icy foliage next to the holly. I think it's so pretty. <sighs> These guys need a little bit of um, water, but I don't, I think we had everything come up. I did have one right here. So you can see, looks like it's been eaten by something. I'm hoping it continues on. Um, but the ones we planted in the beds, these guys, I know they were pretty well established, but they are looking amazing i did just pinch them as well because i wanted it to get it before it's too too long but i bet they'll put on blooms these two are going to be the first bloom would be my guess 
These are looking well too. This one I thought was a dud. It's finally emerging. You can see the Diophinium are being taken over a tiny bit by the Scatatrancha, but they're just putting on bloom stocks as well. I finally got these beds sorted, weeded, covered, both of them I should say. I have not yet planted beans on this trellis, but I will be doing it soon. Uh, but I got these pruned and they're looking good and exciting development. You see that? San Marzano's. These are all, San there's some more on that one over there. I'll go show you. Uh, this one, actually, look. Oh, there's one. So all three of these have some. That's exciting. Oh, and so does that one. They're all San Marzano's. These dahlias are doing well too. There's only one, which was a Catherine mix that has not yet come in. The cucumellos have survived. I planted this Kajari and this one planted itself and I decided to leave it. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a true Kajari. Uh, Cause I think, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before I also had cantaloupe, but I'm sure it's gonna be tasty, whatever it is. So um, this Kajari is also looking good. This section, I made a mistake last year. I think I may have said this before. I did not deadhead this Althea Standard. And it just means that, you know, I got babies everywhere. But the carnations are looking good. The status is rocking it. I can't wait for that to start. It's one of my favorite fillers. Um, and here's another view of the dreamy Mexican primrose this stuff is invasive but it sure is pretty the roses first flush of um, blooms has come and gone despite the soft lives best efforts uh, this is looking pretty good still too and these are just they smell so good I can't wait until it's just one glorious arch I can't remember if I showed this in the video but there was some kale that I planted that was looking so sad. So, so sad. Because I transplanted it from the driveway. And all of it has bounced. Which is exciting. Actually, some of it needs to be harvested ASAP. Um, but I'm excited about that. Uh, the other thing I'm excited about, both my ranunculus and my anemones have finally started blooming. I've been hard, they're very, it's very warm out, so there is some like heat damage. But I'm glad. I was hoping to get some blooms because I felt like I hadn't had any. But, uh, oh, look, we can show you these guys. These are ready to be cut. I apparently have been falling down on the job. This is the wedding mix or bridal mix. Is that not gorgeous? This color is awesome. It is, it just glows in the sunlight, but it's also like sunsetty in and of itself. How pretty. Um, snow peas I was worried about I don't know if I documented this uh last week we had three or four days where it was in the um 90s and the heat index was above 100 and the, the tips of my peas got a little bit crispy and I, I actually told my mom you can see here what happened like they just wilted they got water it was just too hot and I told my mom that she should resign herself to not having snow peas and then the neck, because there was no blooms out at the time. But here we are a week later with glorious snow peas. Look. Tastes so good. They're like sweet still. Mm. So good. There's a lot more I need to harvest, but no update on the cauliflower. I don't know if I'm going to get any. One thing I will also not be getting zinnias. I had a bit of a bug issue. You can see that it's like pretty empty here. This is what they look like before I pulled them. Some of them they left alone, some of them they did not. So I've kind of just left things to see what survives. I put some of my extra seedlings in here. They also did this to a lot of my beans. See like this for instance. I don't know. I'm going to wait a little bit and re -sew. But tomatillos are looking good. What's interesting, oh good, this one does have one. We need to figure out when we know when tomatillos are ready to be harvested. Because I just don't know. 
his cucumelon also survived. I'm trying to train it. Um, but the strawberry bed is looking good. This guy's a little too far gone. I was here not long ago, but sometimes oh, that one this is an evening snack. Hold on. No bucks. Mm. Last time I ate one of these, there's a little green worm on it. I mean, I'm still eating them, but I've learned to peek at them first. This tomatillo has a lot more fruit on it. I also don't know, am I supposed to train these like I do tomatoes or just let it go? I really don't know. I've obviously let it go a little too much. I might do some Googling to see. Um, the celosia is looking good. I did pinch these a while back. Look at this though. Is that not beautiful? This one also is the one that took the best. It's got a, I have learned my lesson. Seed heads get thrown away. I was gonna point this out to you. It's so pretty. Um, Crespedia is looking good. Asters are looking good. These might be the first ones to bloom. I thought the other ones would be, but these are the ones that we pre-started, which goes to tell me, goes to show me I need to pre-start everything. This one was a bare root and it's still coming, or a tuber. This one was a tuber and it's still coming up well. Ground cherries also are looking so good. I don't think there's fruit, you can see, but I don't believe any of them are ripe yet. It's probably gonna be a little bit. The one downside about using straw is you have to be very careful when checking for ground cherries because they're ripe when they fall and they're a tan color that is very close to the color of straw. So you gotta be very diligent. Here are our uh, sugar snap peas. We got babies. You see the babies? There's not many of them. There's just a couple. So beautiful. Uh, that kind of brings us back around to these center beds. I pointed out the flowers. Uh, I don't believe... Oh, wait. I do have some fruit on these. Uh, but I was going to update you on some varieties. This Abe Lincoln is looking very healthy. I expect that these will kind of be a fruit set fairly soon. The one I had planted... I finally planted this cherry tomato. And I planted one... I should have looked at the, you know, temperatures a little bit more. I planted one and the next day, next three days was 100 degrees and it died, despite my water. So the good news was I still had a couple extra. This is now a blue cherry tomato. As is that one, there's another baby back there. I suspect one of these is blue cream and I mislabeled it, but I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. This is a Dr. Witchy's. Which Weish, I'm not sure how you would say it. I haven't found any flowers on it, but I think it, or fruit on it, but I suspect it will be there soon. This bad boy is a Jasper cherry tomato and it has the babiest of babies. So that is truly exciting. Back here, these three were the biggest tomatoes when I planted them. And I don't know if you can see the stalks, but they are hefty, hefty, hefty. All three are um, Paul Robeson's, and I have tomatoes. Isn't that exciting? Um, then this is another one that has survived, but isn't looking good. It's labeled blue, blue, blueberry. Again, I don't know if it is, but this, this is what I am 100% most excited about. It is my Napa Chardonnay. It's looking great. It's putting on growth. I hope it keeps it up and just lives, baby lives. You'll notice I added some alyssum um, in the bottom, cause that is, the, it, what it does is when it grows, it grows around roots and won't compete for nutrients and whatnot. It's also very shallow rooted. So I like it, it helps with weed suppression. It's beautiful and it kind of glitters in my mind. and It'll help bring in some pollinators. These Kadari melons were looking pretty rough, but I think they've rallied. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a little bit of burning. It didn't look like normal burning, but I suspect they'll be scrambling up this trellis soon. And I also added some Salanova lettuce starts. That I might be able to start uh, getting 
getting a couple pieces here and there off of some of the curly ones. Salanova is actually my favorite salad. I need to get some more seeded somewhere. But <sighs> so pretty. I think that pretty much does it for the vegetable garden. I do want to show you, give you a driveway update because it's looking great. And oh, one more thing. Okay. So I'm going to show you my apple tree that is going actually right where that crab apple is dying in the fall. Maybe sooner, but probably not. Uh, I think it might have some kind of spot damage or something. It's got some, I need to be spraying it probably routinely, um, which I've been lax on. So it's a catch up game at this point, but I know I should take this off. I'm gonna preface this by saying, I know I should take it off. In my defense, we up potted it because we knew it was gonna live all summer in its can. And I took off all the fruit that I found when they were babies, but I missed one and I'm gonna leave it because look at it. Look how cute it is. I'm gonna give it one, one fruit, one fruit. I have a couple Annabelle that I was gonna replace with an Incredible, uh, but then they started looking really good and I'm gonna let them bloom out before I move them. But this is the Incredible I picked out. It's beginning to bloom. <sighs> I just love hydrangeas. Let's do a potato bed update and then we'll do a driveway update. And I think, I think that might be it. Um, there's not a lot to show you in the front that's changed. I actually started a video that I never finished and probably won't because I was convinced that none of the um, small potatoes I planted took. I'm here to say not a lot of them did, but some of them did. So you can see uh, it's a little hard to tell. I'm going to own that right now. This right here is a weed, a noxious weed with vicious. Can you see that? Vicious thorns. This is a potato plant. They're somewhat similar, especially when they emerge. So I have let, I need to come out with proper gloves and take the ones that are definitely the weeds out. But we've got potato, potato, potato. This is a potato. That's a potato. This is a potato that is beginning to flower. That means tubers. Nothing here. Uh, there's a small one right here, actually. I said nothing here, but I think that's a potato. That's exciting. This is a potato. You know what, that might be a potato too. Maybe I shouldn't get them long enough. I don't know, but what is doing amazing, these are those potatoes the mushy ones that I was like, I don't think they're gonna do anything, but I'm gonna try. Look at them. Now this is one of those weeds again, which I'm probably not gonna pull out, but, oh, and this might, oh, that's one of those weeds again too. Are they related? Cause this is not one of those weeds and look at that flower. This is one of those weeds. And it's also got a similar flower, but in general, huge section so with potatoes uh, you plant them they come up they flower which is when you know tubers are actively being formed they stop flowering and then they slowly die back which then you can uh, harvest the potatoes I'm thinking that this is probably gonna be another four or five weeks uh, and then I'll be able to at least do for sure the um, mushy variety that is so much more advanced and then maybe the smaller potatoes will be after that so my guess is Probably by end, mid, end of July, might be getting potatoes. Second week in August, definitely getting potatoes. And then, um, I don't know what I'll do with this bed. Maybe cover it to try and get some of the weeds under control and just not plant in it until next year. Cause I've been pulling and pulling and pulling and it still looks bad. Some of those uh, nasty weeds I did leave cause I couldn't tell when they were small if it was potato or not. Cause they look, very similar. So they're obviously nightshades of some kind, um, but I digress. Okay, driveway update time. Before I show you the beauty that is my trellis, which is super exciting, I thought I could give you a, a pepper update because these are looking really good too. I'm so excited and I got some peppers. Remember these guys, they were itty bitty when we planted them. They're putting on some bulk. These are the um, red peppers that I, well, they're, they can be harvested green or red, but I'm, I'm saving them for red. 
These two are my Corbacci, I believe. Yes. Uh, and they're looking great. I don't think I have any babies yet, but what I do have babies on is both of these bad boys. This is the um, Spanish Mammoth Red Pepper. Now, this might look big, but these are just babies. So it'll be a couple weeks before they're ready, but man, so excited. This one has two and it's just covered in buds. So excited about that. I also have some peppers on this guy. There are two or three on. This one is the Jim's Big Jim Stuffing Pepper. Got two-ish. It's hard for me to show you, but they're there. Don't think there's any fruit on this guy. This is a jalapeno. It's looking good. And then this is um, the Shishito Peppers. It has some. I have to figure out when those can be harvested because it's got like three or four. One, two, three. I had to get closer because baby peppers are the best. You see, he's hard to see in this light, but he saw a toot. Oh, there's another coot one right there. I'm gonna have a ton of shishito. So excited. Then these guys, um, these were all pretty small, but they've all bulked up nicely. And um, I don't think they've begun flowering yet, but they will be soon. And I bet we'll have some in the next gardening tour. Okay, and speaking of having some fruit, I'm so excited by this trellis. So excited, guys. The climbing has started. In fact, the one thing that the heat was good for is it just took off. So, let me show you what it looks like right now. It's obviously, I've only had it planted for maybe, I think it's only been planted for two weeks. Um, but the heat has made it just take off. Look at it hard for me in this space. It's majestic in the evening light. Things are doing really well. This is that Blaze Pumpkin Hybrid. Um, pumpkin. I don't know. It's got lots of flowers. I'm trying to look in here. I don't think this is properly pollinated. My guess is that'll turn brown and fall off. Um, but there's some like, do you see that? I think that might turn into a pumpkin. It's not a, it doesn't put on a ton of, it is a pumpkin that has said it had a shorter vine. It is not really vining a ton at all. The squash plant next to it is, and it's looking great. It's a summer squash. I think that's the only baby on it right now. Um, but it is like just kind of climbing and coming up. This watermelon is also climbing. Um, no babies yet. All of the seedlings that we planted did come up. This one right here, you can see it. It's like an itty bitty babe. That's a Waltham butternut squash. I don't know if I'm gonna get squash off of it because it's so small. But it's gonna be a hot summer, so maybe. Um, this side, this is another summer squash. Or not summer squash, spaghetti squash. And it has babies all over it. Some I don't expect it to keep all of them, but it's gonna keep some. I also am predicting it's gonna be the first to go to the top. That's another summer squash. These are um, watermelons that are looking good. They're putting on some flowers, which is exciting, but I just gotta get them trained properly. without breaking, which is the hard part. But, so hopefully now that I kind of put that up, these guys will just kind of find the thing and climb, baby, climb. I just kind of go like this for the lower ones if they're not super tall. I wind them. This is hard to try and, I'm not filming it well. So, keep my walkway clear. Um, yeah, but this side, all the babies came up too. Uh, and I'm excited about that. This is my favorite. This is a Bathsheba climbing rose. It's a more shorter statue. I probably get to the top of that, but it won't, it'll do well. But when they first bloom, here's a good example. Look at this. Is this not perfection? This is like the blush innards with the pure white. And then they kind of go like this and apricot -y before they open a little bit more. And look at that petal count. This is when I love them all. And oh my gosh, they smell so good. I'm bummed. This is one that was hit hard by um, 
south ice, you can still see some of the lingering damage. But, yeah, that's probably it. I think in the next tour, I'll have more that I can show you with these guys. These are a hydrangea, a limelight hydrangea. I've got three of them. I've got a, you might not have noticed this was here, because it's just shot up, but this is a um, hibiscus. I don't remember what variety, but it's a nice purple. I'm sorry, it's a nice red color. I guess I can share this too, because this clematis has finally popped. I don't remember what this is. I'm bummed, because that one did not flower this spring at all. I think all the old wood died, and I'm glad, I guess, that it survived, but we'll get some blooms later this season, but I am so thrilled with this. They're just magnificent. Incursions look them great up here. This dogwood is amazing. And these are the Incredibles that I was actually going to pull out. But I saw them forming heads and I thought, well, we can let them, we can let them bloom. We'll see. This is actually my next project. Uh, Spirea are beginning to go. That's exciting. These dahlias, that one has come up. That one has come up. This one has come up. So I think that's all of them. This looks like it may have gotten hit with some herbicide, which is a bummer. Oh, I guess I can show you these guys. Last year, I planted, not a ton of them survived, but a couple did. Some snapdragons. I think these are pans. And I have some peach ones, which is exciting. I think that's probably going to do it for this video. Um, a brief tour of the front. There wasn't a lot to show. Um, but that is actually where my next video is being filmed. I showed you that trough container with some shade plants. Desperately needed. So excited about. So anyway, things have probably really jumped since our last video. I know I've said it before. I'll say it again. That's probably my favorite part about gardening is just watching things jump, looking for those first tomatoes, which now that I've found the first tomatoes, the next thing I'm going to be looking for is the first ripe tomato, which will also be in very quickly. Like, like many of the things I've harvested has been. Um, but I'm just so excited. And again, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm glad you decided to spend part of your day with me and I can't wait till next time. I'm going to be doing another garden tour. The next garden tour you see will probably be a garden tour of the cottage um, because I know it's something that I've been meaning to do for a bit. Um, and that'll be more perennial bed based. But we'll be coming back into this probably it'll be, my guess is it'll be like two and a half weeks till the next tour. And then I'll probably start doing them weekly because once we reach mid-July, everything's going to jump. And it's the best part of gardening. So... Anyway, thank you again for joining me. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.